Kia ora and welcome to another episode of the New Zealand Quilt Show. I'm going to keep this intro short because it's a pretty full-on episode. First up, I've got an interview with Jenny Bacon from Australia. Jenny is a quilt judge and she was recently in New Zealand for, in fact, it was just last weekend, a three-day seminar run through Aotearoa Quilters on judging quilts. And even though I was in the throes of moving house, I went down and I spent three days learning all about judging, jurying and curating and it was fantastic. Had a great weekend learning and networking and increasing my knowledge in all of those areas. It's a, another skill to add to my skill set I suppose but just just um, a, a fantastic weekend, you know, spending time with people who are passionate about the same things that you are so that was really awesome it was in it was in Wellington it was a bit chilly but we had a nice indoor um, place to hold our meetings and um, it was in the oh, Capital Gateway Motor Inn and I'd recommend that as a venue they were lovely people very warm very nice so we also got to see the International Wonders of the World Quilt Challenge quilts that were there. That was 30 quilts from Japan, France and New Zealand. There were 30 quilters from each country. And there were 30 themes, 30 wonders of the world. So there were three quilts, one from each country for each of the themes. So we, we did a bit of practicing on those quilts, which was really fascinating too. It made you look at them really closely. And made me appreciate them even more. They are coming to Whangarei. This is for your for my local peeps. They're coming to Whangarei at Rayburn House from the 18th of June to the 1st of July. So we will get to see them up here. And later on in this episode you'll hear Mary Culver. She's the president of Aotearoa Quilters. And she will tell you where they are on show in August in Palmerston North. Because that's the next special meeting get together of Aotearoa Quilters. So I chat to her after I've spoken to Jenny all about Aotearoa Quilters, who they are, what they do, what they can offer you and their long-term plans for nurturing quilting in New Zealand. So that was quite neat to talk to her about that as well. So short and sweet, let's hear from Jenny. Um, enjoy and I'll catch you again soon. Ka kite. Bacon has been making quilts since the 1970s when she took a class with the Embroidery Guild and learned how to make a silk pincushion. Jenny makes traditional quilts, describing needle turn, applique and hand quilting as her favourite techniques. But she also makes art quilts where she uses traditional quilt, traditional techniques in a non-traditional way. She has won many awards and accolades for both styles of quilts. And Jenny is also a certified judge with the Quilters Guild of the British Isles and has travelled widely to judge quilt shows, including in the UK and the US, as well as here in New Zealand and, of course, her homeland, Australia. Jenny is also an accomplished exhibition curator, having been heavily involved in the Biennial Golden Textures Quilt Exhibition. And today I'm talking to Jenny at the Aotearoa Quilters Education Seminar in Wellington, New Zealand, where Jenny is teaching a three-day intensive workshop titled Judging at Quilt Shows. So Jenny lives in Maryborough in central Victoria, Australia, and welcome Jenny. Thank you, Charlotte. It's lovely being here. Even though it's a little bit cooler than No, home. it's not, it's actually. Not. No, it's just as cold <laughs> right. in central Victoria. People think of Australia as a hot yeah. country. No, frosty nights, right. continental. Yeah, I guess being on the edge of the desert, you get that yes. cold. Cold, mm. cold nights. So let's start back with learning to make a silk pin cushion and then it's a big jump to being an international quilt judge and tutor. So can we get a bit of a, a potted history of your quilting career and let's start with some of those early quilts. The earliest things are I was taught embroidery by my English grandmother mm -hmm. who had come out after the First World War and taught me to sew. and She thought it was part of every young woman's 
thing that they needed to know, but it was useful. My mother was a weaver, and so she worked, she went to it late in life, but she ended up in this craft field. Mm -hmm. And I was working full time in a very different job, but I needed something at night to help calm me down somewhat. <laughs> yes. So patchwork was ideal. And when I found that, mm -hmm. I got hooked into that. So I made lots of patchwork pin cushions and sold them at craft fairs and things. Right. Which was and were they fun. traditional sort of patterns? Oh, they are. Yeah. Yes. Very. Right. And but very good technique, we taught. Yeah. The Embroiderers Guild said you will, of course, only sew with silk. Right. <laughs> because anything else is common and nasty. And, and were they hand pieced? Oh, yes. Hand right. English Everything. paper piecing. Oh, English paper piecing. Okay. Down to quarter inch hexagons, which mm -hmm. was where we started. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because they felt you should learn to do this. Right. So it took me quite a long time to get out of that. And in about the 1980s, I moved to a rural town out of the city. And one of the first things I found in the local news agency was a copy of the Quilters Newsletter magazine from right. America, Ooh, which I had it. never seen before. It's a 1981 issue that I still have. Yes. <laughs> and it really opened up this other world of how you could do it differently. You didn't need pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. You could make any shape you wanted. Right. If you could draw it on a piece of cardboard off a cereal packet, you could make it. And so I learnt a lot of that. And it wasn't until very much later that I found quilters and quilt shows, which was a bit of an eye-opener. So opener. you were doing this on your own? Yes. I hadn't met another quilter. I didn't know they existed. Mm. I thought it was just me mm. <laughs> being odd. <laughs> mm -hmm. And those needle turn. So you learnt needle I learnt that before I met another quilter mm -hmm. and I learnt that from, mainly from the Quilters Newsletter magazine. Right. And hand quilting. Yes. Well, there wasn't anything else actually right. in the 1980s. Right. There were no machines and I'd never seen a machine that did anything like it. I didn't see them till much later. And so you still describe needle turn and hand quilting as your favourite techniques. Why do they continue to resonate with you? I think because I can do them anywhere. So mm -hmm. I can take them with me when I'm travelling. And I've practised. And doing something you know you can do without having to worry about the technique mm -hmm. is much easier mm -hmm. than trying something new which you haven't practised mm -hmm. and doesn't work that well. Yeah, because with any skill you have to practise to, yes. to do it. and they that. say that thing of you need 10,000 hours. Well, I think I've probably done mine in legal <laughs> turn. So I can do the equivalent of play the violin. Mm -hmm. I yeah. can't play the violin. <laughs> no. <but laughs> so I found an American Quilter Society website with a little bio of yours, and, and they asked, why do you make quilts? And you wrote, because I need to. So can you expand on I'd, that statement? I would keep making them, whether there was a reason to make them or not. Like, I make quilts that I put in exhibitions, but I would keep making those quilts, new ones, all the time, because I have to do something. It's mm -hmm. what I do. It's like people who paint or people who do anything else, garden or whatever. Mm -hmm. I make quilts. So do you, do you work in a studio or are you doing this at home? Well, now I'm retired almost. So before I finished work, I built the studio in the back garden. And so I have a separate area I can go to mm -hmm. and do all the machining and the ironing and those things you need to do. Mm -hmm. I try and keep them out of the house. Right. It's a very small house. Right. And so it doesn't look good with the machine on the dining room table. But then your hand and work. You I can, can take that down and do it at night. Mm -hmm. And I live on my own, so it's something to do while the yeah. television is on. I right. don't actually see very much. Right. But I hear but it. But you hear it, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I listen to podcasts, including yours. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> and then... Art quilts, you also make art quilts, 
So where did that fit into this quite strongly traditional? That probably practice? came a bit later. That my other grandmother, who was third generation Australian but descended from the Scots, she did watercolour painting mm -hmm. and she taught me to paint. Right. So I had always had an interest in art and at school I wanted to do art. Mm -hmm. But I went to a school that was very full of academic people and they said, no, you're far too intelligent to right. do art. You have to do <laughs> physics and chemistry. Oh, so I dutifully did. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was useless at maths, but I wasn't bad at chemistry. <laughs> So I did those things and it always was extra. But when I moved to the country, I became interested in what the landscape looks like mm -hmm. and expressing that in a sort of abstract way. So you had an art background through one background. Yes. You had a sewing background yeah, through, through another. The other. So I guess in a way it's a natural... Yes, and my mother being in the craft scene, mm -hmm. you met artists as well. Yeah. And so... So yeah. did you did you have an epiphany one day that you could start, or did you just see it? No, I just you thought saw it I'll make you. one. Yeah. I'll see what happens. Yeah. Oh, look, here's this thing. I can <laughs> enter one in here. Yeah. And at first, it's interesting, they were based on the titles of songs. Right. Um, I've got one I brought up with me. It's called When the Blackbird Sings. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't, there's nothing about that in it in right. some ways. But it's about how that made me feel. Mm -hmm. So I made a whole series about song titles. Then I started I'm making more now things about landscapes. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of interested in the landscape we live in, which is very different to most But there's places. still an abstract. Would yes, you describe they're the fairly minimalist abstract. Right, right, okay, cool. So, let's talk about your inspirations that inform those artwork. You say it's landscape around you. It is, it's the colour. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because at first glance you look at this and it's all brown and olive green and you would have thought there's no colour. But we had a landscape artist up a few years ago and he was taught in the Glasgow School in Scotland. Mm -hmm. He's moved out to Australia and he sees it totally differently. And I looked at his paintings and I said, Lars, how do you get all that colour? And he said, oh, you've got to look at the ground. Ah. And if you do, if you look at the small stuff, you find there's all sorts of colours in the clay and the grass and the things. It's much more colourful than you think at so first sight. So it's the art of looking. Yes. Yeah. And I'm interested in the colour and the pattern, mm -hmm. of the, especially the trunks against the sky and mm -hmm. the trees. Not yeah. the tree shape. Yeah. They're far too difficult. <laughs> Is is this what influences your traditional work then? Is it the same well, thing in a different in, way? In a it... different way, but I joined a quilt study group which met in a town not very far from me. It was run by an American woman who had this amazing collection of traditional quilts. Her own and, or? Yes, yeah, she'd bought them all right. and she had them out here. And so for about three or four years, we met every two months. Mm -hmm. She would bring out some of the quilts in her collection and we'd look at them and talk about why did they make it this way? So one day we looked at all the ones that were made out of mourning fabric and there's this whole thing of women having to go into mourning and wear black and then grey and then a wonderful day you can wear mauve. Right. <laughs> And how long did it take them to it go took through them, that process? A lot of them, it took them two or three years, right. by which time someone else had died. So you started again, again. at the beginning, and some of them never got out of black. Mm -hmm. I it suppose was, you get to a certain age where everybody yes, knows dying. that's right. So you old ladies wear black all the time. And so so their quilts. quilts were made of grey, black and mauve. Oh, I never knew. And so you can pick them. Right. But I became interested in a certain time before the Civil War in America, 
was very fashionable to make quilts with very tiny pieces, a lot of scraps, a lot of different fabric, and then very wide and appliqued borders. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a chance to do a bit of piecing mm -hmm. out of little pieces. But I didn't have to make that huge. I right. could make that just the centre. And then I could do appliqued borders. As well. So I've been doing that ever since. Right. I haven't run out yet of ideas. And so, so that study group is no longer... It doesn't operate anymore. She went back to America, mm -hmm. which happens with yeah. people, and, and that sort of folded up. But the, quite a few of us still sort of meet up a bit, and we all went in different ways, mm. but we learnt a lot. It's quite, it's quite interesting meeting someone with quite, such a dichotomy of styles that you have these abstract... <laughs> art quilts and these traditional yeah. pieced and appliqued and hand pieced and appliqued right. quilts that are based on a lot, you know, another piece of award. Yeah. So how do you balance those two styles and, and, and do you find that you get one competes more than the other for your time? Not necessarily, and I make them for different reasons now. In the last year or so, I've realised... I make the quilts for exhibition and they go to quilt shows. The art pieces I make for art shows and they sell. Right. And they're often quite small, so right. I don't have to make And you're things. selling them through local galleries? Local galleries, exhibitions, our oh. own things yeah. that we run. You recently did an art trail. Yes, you? and right. that was great fun. Mm -hmm. Two weekends and... We got lots of visitors and sold lots and, mm -hmm. you know, you think, oh, this is all right, I can do it again next year. <laughs> so I've got to make more. Right. <laughs> so and those you've got a show ones are up. small yeah. and I actually put them on canvases right. because they're about six to eight inches square. Mm -hmm. And someone picked one up once and said, is this a potholder? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I will make sure you never think that's a potholder ever again. And so are you stitching it to canvas? No, I glue it. You glue it's it. very quick. Right. You get it finished, you can have it all on the canvas within minutes. And are you painting that canvas? I paint first? the canvas. Right. A colour to match your quilt or a black? Or no, a... usually black, occasionally gold. Mm -hmm. It depends on the colour of the quilt, but most of them are black. I think, too, it helps people see them as these are meant to be hung in a domestic place. They're not very big, so they can think of, oh, I've got a space that mm -hmm. will fit in. Mm -hmm. Like, if they're huge, people think, I haven't got a wall. No. And do you find that a lot of the people are travelling through? So There are quite a lot traveling? of people now, mm. yes, who are grey nomads, we call them. Ah, and they're camper vans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can see them driving up <laughs> and you hope they've got room in the caravan. <laughs> right, very crucial too. So let's go on to quilt judging because that's another sphere of interest, interest for you. So, so when did you become interested in judging? Well, probably 2010, probably. So it's a while ago. It took a while. At first I just started thinking, what are these people thinking about? Like, how did they come to this decision? Mm -hmm. Like every, And then I discovered most of them had no training at all. Right. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, we know. But I did discover they were running a training course in America and I went over, I had to go for something else and in those days I was working so I could afford to travel whenever I wanted to mm -hmm. and that was easy. But it went for five years. The training and, course? Yes. Oh gosh. You got no help, they just gave you what you needed to know at the end and in the next five years you've got to find this out. And we will give you an oral exam. And in the meantime, you have to travel to the United States every month for five years. That could get expensive. That's right. I thought even I can't afford that. So I decided that wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. And I looked around and the British Guild had a course which you could do mainly online. I had to go three times, but mm -hmm. 
That was all right. So that was the Quilters Guild of the yes. British Isles. So that was two years. So it's years. a two-year course, uh-huh. and they have an intake every second year. Yeah. So there were 20 of us. We came from all over the world. It was wonderful. Yeah. Because now I know these Italian quilters and Russian quilters. and. So you met three times, and how yeah. long for each time? Only usually a day or two. Right. There was a weekend at the beginning, um, a day when we did jurying in Edinburgh, uh-huh. and then one day at the end where we had to go and practice judging in front of someone Ooh. at the Festival of Quilts in Birmingham. And in between and these meetings... You did all your work online. Right. It was very academic, really, but that suited me. I'd done academic work before I knew. But the first module, we all put our things in, and we all failed. Oh, I and I nearly had a heart attack. I'd never failed anything in my life. Oh, yeah. And I said to my brother-in-law... But I'd failed. Oh, he said he was a university lecturer. He said we always do that the first year. Just make to take sure, you off your high yeah, horse. <laughs> make sure you don't think you know the lot. <laughs> and so then we set up an email group. Those of us we knew each other, and we thought we'll just talk to each other as uh-huh. we're going. And uh-huh. that's how we discovered everyone had failed. Right. It wasn't personal. And we managed to get the things in and get up to speed, and we were right from mm-hmm. then on. But they were very different people. One woman had n- left school when she was 15. Oh. She'd never written an essay before in her life. Mm-hmm. And if it hadn't been for the email group with us to say to her, this is how you write an essay, right. just do this, this and this, there's a format. So is there a bit of an onus on the Guild itself to perhaps look at who's well, applying and to say maybe you need to do something? They certainly they didn't, didn't right. do that. I don't know whether they thought some of us would fail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, in fact, everyone got through it in the end. They were quite good in the end because one woman, her husband died and she had to drop out for a while and then start again and they fixed it up for her. And they had those of us travelling from all over the place. Yeah. There was one woman from Abu Dhabi. And right. So and I presume you're paying for this course. Oh, yes. Right. It's not, it's not a huge sum. I think it was £300 or something. Right. Yeah. But they need something to be able to pay the tutors yeah. to and correct the, so stuff. So the tutors are, have been yeah. through this course themselves. Yes. And have done a course in adult education. As well, right, okay. So it's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Now you're also a member of the Quilt New South Wales Judging Education Program. So what is that program about? That's a bit different, but it's still because they really wanted to make sure everyone who was a judge had the same sort of background, you know, Mm -hmm. that you knew much the same thing. Consistency. But... It's not as academic. Um, It doesn't suit us to do it that way. But it lasts for two years. We run ten sessions on different subjects over that two years. And people have to attend at least 60% of them. In person. Yes. So they have to go to at least six. Because this year we've got some people from Queensland and they've got to come down and... Mm -hmm. You know, by the time you pay for airfares and accommodation mm. and things, you want to make it even mm-hmm. for most people. Mm. Right. So at the end, if you get there and pass, we have quite a few who drop out. Okay. It's interesting. They self-select. Yeah. Either there's no way I can do this. I don't like telling people theirs didn't win. Uh-huh. I don't want my friends to think I'm judging them. You know, or I don't want or to stand I, on my feet for no, eight hours. No, that's right. <laughs> I've just done a day of practice judging and I'm, what? no, I can't yeah, yeah, manage. Yeah. And so, but at the end, if they pass, they go on to the judging panel. Mm-hmm. And so we can select judges from mm-hmm. that panel. And we've got quite a lot now. Right. It's a useful, I mean, we've completed one day of our three, and already I'm feeling a lot more confident with 
looking at one of my own quilts and and knowing mm. possibly what a judge is yeah. looking for. So That's it's useful, not, perhaps, even if you aren't not going to judge a quilt. anything different, really. Mm. Mm. It's looking at things in terms of their design and their technique. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I find most women can pick holes in their own quilts. They know what's wrong. Mm-hmm. If you say to them, I really liked your quilt. Oh, we're very good at They'll say, oh, but down. did you yes, notice yes. here, this corner doesn't quite meet. Mm, yeah. And you say, well, no, I didn't notice, but now you point it out yeah. to me. <laughs> We're very good at not accepting the, praise and compliments. Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. And you have to learn to just say thank you. Yeah. So do you think that being a quilt good... So does being a good quilt maker mean that a person will be a good judge? Not necessarily. Because what sort of skills do you think a judge requires? I think you need to be really decisive. You can't be dithering about whether I think this is all right or not, and that's something that you get better at. You need to be fairly flexible because you've got to work with a whole lot of people mm-hmm. who have control over what you're doing. So you're talking about the girls, your volunteers. Yes, the volunteers, the people who run the exhibition and the people who give the prizes, mm-hmm. who in some places would like the prize to reflect right. the winner. Yeah. You know, yeah. If I they're giving big machines, mm-hmm. they would prefer it was machine quilted (laughs) they don't always get their way but you've got to be able to explain to them why you didn't yeah so for someone who doesn't perhaps have access to a judging course what is the best way for them to learn about judging well going to workshops can help you know going to quilt shows can help I go and now I find I'm judging all the time you're looking at things thinking, oh, in this row, this is the standout. Right. You know, this is the one. But why do I like it? Why doesn't it work? Mm -hmm. We had to do an exercise in going to an exhibition of something that was not quilts. It wasn't allowed to be quilts, so I did paintings. And we had to critique 12 of them, but we had to have at least one that we said didn't work. And you had to be able to say, why doesn't mm-hmm. this work? Mm-hmm. And it's re- that's an interesting thing to do. You look at something that you find a bit disturbing or you just think, oh, that doesn't do it. So as a judge, a skill is being able to defend your decisions. Yes, or dis- to be able to be objective about yeah. what you say. Yes. And I, it was amusing. Like the two Italians in our course, they went to an exhibition of Klimt ah, in Venice, correct. as you would. <laughs> and one of them said to us, I could tell the one that was no good as soon as I walked through the door. Right. <laughs> and now I'm thinking... Oh, I don't think I would have yeah. said that. <laughs> I think I'd rather pick something else. But they picked really different things. Okay. Like art with taxidermy and dead animals. Interesting. Yes, I hadn't actually seen much art with dead animals. Someone else did concrete. Okay. So there are different things in different places. And, when, and, and you've you got to be able to look at all those things. They made us look at ceramics and other things. So we got used to looking at shape and form mm-hmm. as well as things flat on a wall. Because yeah. now not all quilts are flat, flat on, on the wall. wall. Yeah. So what about attending shows as a scribe? Well, I think that helps. Mm -hmm. I think I've learnt as much helping out on judging floors as anything else. Even just being the person who carts the quilts around. Mm -hmm. You pick up an awful lot. And you see judges, you think, oh, I don't think I'd do that. Mm -hmm. Or ones you think, she's just fantastic. And so it really helps you get an idea of how you would say things. Yeah. And, and yes, because that's something that I'm learning is there's a whole language and I really need to develop my fluency in how to, how to term, this quilt doesn't work. Well, that's not helpful <laughs> for anyone. No. So 
you, to, to uh, rephrase you that, that in a clear, concise and positive and constructive manner. Yes. Because we're not there to pick holes in someone's work and say, no. this is awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if you got that back, you would never go in a quilt show again. Yeah. And if we don't have shows, how do we share with other people and get new people coming yeah. in? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, and, and yeah, it's not all flowers and sunshine quilt judging because you are working with people's mm. pride. And... Have you ever given a prize knowing that it might be a controversial award? And can you talk a bit about how you deal with negative reactions to your decisions as a judge? Most of the time I don't worry <laughs> too much. I don't go and look. Right. You don't go and look on the internet to see what are they all saying about uh -huh. this. But I can remember once that people felt it was too small. Right. Well, I don't think that's a valid criticism anyway. That's because it was just different to what they were used to. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean to say it wasn't the best quilt there. Just it was small. And I have been to shows where a miniature has won mm -hmm. the best of show. Mm -hmm. And it causes a fuss the first time because mm -hmm. people say there's hardly any work in that. Huh? Well, actually... <laughs> and where's their miniature I quilt? Know. <laughs> and that's the thing, like hand quilters will say, people who long arm, they just put it in and go away and have a cup of tea. Mm. Well, actually, custom quilt makers with long arms do not go away and have a cup of tea. Mm. And it's hard work. So, do you so think you've that got to find out about all that. Do you think that's something that comes into quilt judging? Is, yeah, having a yeah. knowledge. You've a got to have a knowledge. breadth of knowledge. Mm -hmm. You can't just know about the bit you do. Mm -hmm. I've got to understand machine applique. I don't personally do it most of the time. Occasionally I'll try and think, oh, this looks pretty awful. <laughs> But you have to understand how it works mm -hmm. and that it is a skill the same and you've got to practice that yeah. too yeah. until you're good at it. Yeah, and what, what, what's good machine yeah. applique okay, and what's And I know a work. friend who bought a long arm, retired from work and decided she would take up good. She took six months off to learn how to use it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. don't just leap no, you out. Don't. And well, if you've ever tried a long arm at a show and you go, oh, yeah, have a go with that. Woo! I know. <laughs> and you've just watched the woman using yeah. it and she does beautiful things. And you think, I'll just whip up something like that. It's not <laughs> how it works. No. Mm. And so, so you do need to understand all those different yeah. techniques. Yeah. And one of your favourite tasks, you've said before, as a judge, is to award a judge's choice award. So, oh. so what is a judge's choice award, and, and how does it differ from the other awards in the show? Usually, it's the one you liked most. So, it's the one where you can be subjective. subjective. Mm -hmm. It can be the one you like. It might not be the most perfect. Um, some shows actually have rules that you can't pick one that's won a prize or a bigger prize for something else. So you can't do the thing of the best of show gets three mm. judges' choices. Mm. That's not fair, really. Mm. And I think I told you the story today of the woman who cried when I gave her the, my judges' choice because she'd never had a prize before. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was the most joyous thing. Mm -hmm. And, well, it was obvious she wasn't technically the most proficient but her use of colour and everything was just wonderful mm -hmm. and she said now I'm going to put in for more Excellent. <laughs> and, and that's what you and want. that's what yeah. it's about so, so it's encouraging someone so you can you can put aside your objective hat a bit yes. with the judge's choice which is a bit of a relief by yeah. the end of a couple of days uh -huh. <laughs> do you usually have yourself I'm talking about yourself here do you usually have your judge's choice sorted out? Or Often does it take I quite a bit? can take, but I usually get them to put aside a couple as I go. So I might have three that I'll have another look at. Yeah. But often I know mm. in my heart. I guess which it's like one. a viewer's choice, isn't it? When it I is, walk around yes. a quilt show with my friends, friends and I pick a viewer's choice. 
And often, you know, the judges look at the viewer's choice and think, why did they pick that? Yeah, yeah. It's the same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's just that that is a subjective choice, mm -hmm. whereas the other ones are, should be much more objective. Yeah. And often you look at a judge's choice and you look at the judge who picked it and you can either say, yes, I can see that it yeah, would appeal to that judge because I know that style, yeah. or it's something completely <laughs> different, different. Yeah. because that appeals to them because it's completely yeah. different from yes. what they do. Yeah. So we all have personality that comes yes. out. Yeah. It's nice to be able to do it for a change. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to get in about the Golden Textures exhibition. So should we have a little bit yes. of a talk about this? What is it? And how did it start? And just tell me more about it. Golden Textures is run at our local art gallery, which is fairly small but really concentrates on contemporary so art. So what art gallery is it? It's in the city of Maryborough mm -hmm. in central Victoria. We have an acquisitive prize which was given by the council because they thought it would encourage tourism, uh -huh. which is something we need to yes. do. Do you think it does? And it does. Yes. We get more visitors for the quilts than we do for any other thing. Right. And so an acquisitive prize is? Means we keep it. Right. We pay them. It's now $3,000. And you keep that quilt. And we keep it. This year, well, next year when we have the next one, we're going to display the ones we've bought. How many have you had? We've got three, so right. it's biennial. The so biennial it's only, exhibition. Yes, so it's and we've got the three. And they're going to give us another one that they've made more recently. Right. Which I think should be interesting because you want to see where they've progressed uh -huh. since yes. they... Well, in our great New Zealand quilt show held in Rotorua last... Yeah, they had all the symposium winners from the first symposium yeah. when they awarded yeah. best, from when they that started awarding the best of show, and that was fascinating. I know it's yeah. amazing when you go back yeah. and look. Mm. It's like looking at your own quilts. You look mm. at ones you made ten years ago, and you think, oh, yeah. "What was I thinking of?" <laughs> so it's a public art gallery, not a private. No, one. it's a, what we would call a community art gallery. Mm. So you don't pay to go in. Right, it's free. It tries to have artists from central Victoria, mm -hmm. fairly large area yeah. <laughs> to pick from, um, and a variety. So we, this year we've had ceramics and photographs and paintings and they've got landscapes at the moment. And, so they, and they have their own collections as well. Yes, right. we inherited a collection from the Rotary Art Shows right. of the past, which are very traditional painting. But when the gallery, the staff are on holidays in the summer, we put some of them up. Right. They're the ones that everyone likes because right. we know what they are. Yes. It's a tree we, we can see. We can see it's a tree. We don't yeah. need to too hard. I know. Mm. But, so how did you so, get involved with it? I'm quite friendly with the woman who runs the gallery and she's interested in textiles, not because she does them. She actually comes from a theatre background, mm -hmm. but she worked with the people who make the costumes and the backdrops and mm -hmm. all those things. And her partner does the lighting, so mm -hmm. and he's excellent at mm -hmm. that. So it's all set up really well. And we can, we're just taking entries now. We work from proposals for a quilt. We'll jury the proposals in June, and they will have until next February to make it. And Some so, of them might have made it. Are these Central Victoria again, or is this no, Australia-wide? No, this is Australia-wide. We haven't not opened it up. It's Australia-wide. Because if we open it up, <laughs> we will get 50,000 Japanese. Yes, because it makes such beautiful quotes. I know, yeah. and it, probably not so many of them make contemporary art quilts. Mm -hmm. And this is what this is about. This is about, and this is probably our biggest thing. Mm -hmm. is to make sure we're getting things that are contemporary art. So it's a biennial quilt exhibition of Australia artists showing contemporary, contemporary art quilts. Yes. Right. And we've got a fairly broad definition of what is a quilt. It only needs to be two layers mm -hmm. and held somehow together held together with right. stitches. But it can come off the wall uh -huh. 
In fact, we love things that come off the wall yeah. because you can make a much more interesting display if you've got some on a plinth and some on the wall. Like, they don't all have to be rectangles mm -hmm, no. hanging. Yes. So are you, organ who organise? I'm the curator. curator. You're the curator. And the, the essential The gallery, gallery manage, the, they and I, they've got an exhibitions person and their gallery manager. We do the curating mm -hmm. together. and Well, we do the jurying, jurying together. So you look at those They're proposals. They're both artists right. sort of people. So you're getting someone who knows nothing about quilts who can say... I don't know. Does this hang yeah. anywhere? Like, so with some input, how are you going to knows? put it up? Yeah. Okay. And my partner makes the things to help us hang things that right. are different. <laughs> Technical whiz. Yes, yeah, like we had one that was a spiral. Okay. Oh and gosh. <laughs> yes. Whereas Cole looked at it and said, "Oh, that's no problem. I'll just make this armature." Right. Okay. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> went. <laughs> So it's travelled, this exhibition. It's travelled to the UK? It did one year. For the Birmingham The 2015 one. We yeah. took to Birmingham, which was an interesting process, but it wasn't too bad. We've got a very good packing company in Australia that I just take all the quilts to them and they make a box to fit and they pack them all properly and they were there in... England in three days. Wow. That's so quicker uh, than you I, can get there. I know. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty good. And interestingly, while we were there, some people came and said, we run a quilt show in France. Do you want to bring it back? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about yeah. that for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I did think perhaps I should ask one of the others, do right. they mind? Did you take the but whole we, exhibition? No, we have to select a bit because there is a problem about packing things. Mm. And if one quilt, one of them weighed about a ton. Right. And I decided that was too hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I wouldn't be able to hang it. In Birmingham, we had a fabulous team of young women who came from the uni. They were doing a textiles course. They were on holidays. They were fantastic with a drill. And they and, hung it. And they you. hung it. Ah. All got them all straight and Beautiful. right height and everything. And we just had to run around and put up the labels. It was easy. And in France, when I got there, they were all up. Right. So. Oh, and so, is... what was what was the reaction from those foreigners looking at Australian calls? <laughs> you know, quite uniquely Australian work. They were really interested. Mm. Everyone was very nice. They were quite different, and it's interesting looking at your. Australian work or New Zealand work or anyone else's in comparison with other places. Both times I was next to the Mexicans ah. and theirs is quite different yeah. and then further along with the Russians right. and theirs different is again. different again and ours tends to be very colourful. In Birmingham in particular we had a lot of people who came up who were almost in tears who said I left Australia 20, oh. 30 years ago and, and married home. an Englishman have never been home and this is home. Oh, wow. Like I, the sky and the desert and mm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then in France they translated the artist statements into French as well as English, <laughs> which was very good of them because yeah. I couldn't have. But one woman had made a quilt about Eureka and the rebellion that happened during the gold rush. Right. And they were really interested in this because it was the same time as the French Revolution. Oh, okay. And so they had a whole sense of history about this mm -hmm. and they didn't know that Australia had had a very small rebellion mm. which had not turned into a revolution mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. But So different that, things attracted yes. different So cultures. it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. Would you do it again? Probably, yes, I ask. could be talked yeah. into it. Yeah. But I don't know that I'd volunteer. It's hard work because mm. you, you've usually got to be there all day, to every talk. day. And yeah. so if it's on for a week, mm. by the end, 
My French is very poor. Mine is non-existent. Very limited, very schoolgirl stuff. <laughs> and so I can manage about the first two words and then they look at me and yeah. speak in English yeah. because they can work out you're not. Yeah. Um, so it's hard work and you're tired. Yeah, by the end of it. Yes. Mm. But it'll and be it, very rewarding. It's fabulous mm. fun. And... The French one wasn't quite as expensive, but Birmingham cost us quite a lot of money. Right. So that you've so who got was to paying that. We were. As in they the, were offering the us the wonderful. Yes. Right. So the gallery was paying. You know that, but the French were much easier to get on because we paid for it to go over, but they paid for it to come okay. back. Mm, that's nice. Isn't so it? that was nice. So, where can people find out more about Australian quilters? I think probably the state guilds are the best place and Googling mm -hmm. is very handy. So Australia state, so has several, how many states? Is it eight? Mm, gosh, don't ask me. <laughs> Some and of them each are one has a state Each guild. one has its own. So there is the guild in the Northern Territory mm -hmm. that has two branches, right. Alice Springs and Darwin and this Queensland, Western Australia and because I know there's Quilt New South Wales website yes. that I've been on recently yes. when I was researching you and, and I was the, very impressed with its professionalism. So is there an overarching... No. No. We've never quite managed to get it together to agree okay. on what we would have. So they, they these been guilds bigger, talk to each I think. other? They talk to each other and they have a meeting once a year. Okay. But they've and never... And then under, say, Quilt, Quilt New South Wales, which is the state guild... Yes. What what's underneath that? There, there are a lot clubs? of local groups too, because obviously people from the far west of New South Wales mm. can't travel in mm -hmm. all the time, so they have their own local ones. Victoria has a reasonable number of local groups. Too. They, they have a slightly different relationship with their local groups. So, do you if you join a local group, do you automatically join no. the state guild? No, no, not automatically. So that would be a separate. The, the group might, and in Victoria, the group can put in one quilt in the show. Okay. But it can't be one that from someone who's put it in before. There are a lot of rules oh, about okay. this. But New South Wales doesn't have any put in by groups. Like, well, they haven't category for group quilts but made by a whole lot of people yeah but they have people there at the quilt show talking about their local group mm -hmm. so if people turn up from Bathurst or Orange or somewhere they can find their local people and uh -huh. find out where to go at home so you might have your local guild in Maryborough and you would have yeah. a local guild show and yes. but then you have a state show no. as well. Yes. Yeah. And from that, we pick the best of show from each state gets moved around Australia all the next year. Okay. Benina pay for that, that sort of sponsored thing. So it's called the best of Australia. And so that gets shown once? No, at every state show. Oh, okay. Right. So it actually gets transported around the whole of so Australia. So the best in show in 2000 for New South Wales, Tasmania, they all get shown at each yes. state show in 2001. Yes. Right, okay. I think I'm getting it. <laughs> We all have very complicated ways Don't of organising things. And now, where can people find out more about yourself or if they'd like to we'll connect with you or book a, se a session on... Either the, the website, which is just jennybacon.com, nothing, yes, yeah. nothing very exciting, or Jenny Bacon Quilts on, on Facebook, Facebook, which right. I'm... Slightly better at organising. And Instagram? I do Instagram, as you Jenny know. Jenny Bacon. Jenny Bacon. Usually if you put the name in, it'll find Bacon's whoever it is. Bacon's really unusual last night. Oh, you'll it? find a whole lot of political oh, right. people that are uh. all my family. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll look for, for, for Bacon <laughs> Quilts. <and we'll, laughs> That's right. If you put the two things in we'll together. We'll find the right one. Okay. And you travel and teach and yes, lecture for as long as I am able. <laughs> <laughs> you get a bit older and you start thinking, this won't be forever. Right. Well, Someone I'm... said, when you get to your mid-80s, you've got to stop. How old's Kay, um, Kay Fassett? 
Oh, he, yes, still, but he doesn't do much of the work. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanders so along. So what you and need is an entourage. That's right. <laughs> you need an I need entourage, someone <laughs> because I like being able to manage it all myself. Yes. Like. If you've got to lift the case, mm. it would be good if you could do it. Yeah, yeah. Like, what if there's no one there? You get stranded somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've tried getting round on the underground in London with a mm. case that was slightly too large. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. So, thank you, because I know it's a busy three days and you've taken time out to talk no, to me nothing. and everyone else who's listening. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed it. Oh, great. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to the next two days. We'll make you work hard. (laughs) All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Culver is the president of Aotearoa Quilters, and she joins me here today to give us a lowdown on who Aotearoa Quilters is, what they do for New Zealand quilters, and what what exciting things are on the program. Yes, I'll probably edit that out. (laughs) So welcome, Mary. Thank you, Charlotte. So first up... Can you tell me more about what is Aotearoa Quilters? And what does Aotearoa mean for our overseas listeners? So Aotearoa is the Māori name for New Zealand. And so Aotearoa Quilters is the National Association of New Zealand Quilters and Textile Artists. And when did they begin? Um, they history. began <laughs> in, in about 1994. And they were not Aotearoa Quilters They were quilters originally then? called New Zealand Association of Quilters. Which New Zealand Quilters, yeah. shortens down Nans to Nans Q. So if you ever hear anyone talk about Nans Q, what they're talking about is the beginnings That's of right. Aotearoa Quilters. Mm. Right. And who, are, who's, who makes up? Aotearoa Quilters. Does anyone, can anyone join? So anyone can join and so we have members all across New Zealand and some in Australia and overseas as well. Mm -hmm. So anyone who identifies or is interested in quilting scene in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Um, So and our committee is drawn from members across New Zealand Mm -hmm. and so we're spread from the north to the south um, in terms of... And how does that work logistically? Logistically, it means that we get together face to face probably twice a year, sometimes three times a year, and we have regular teleconferences. So, and of course, the emails go back and forward. And mm-hmm. yeah. Right. And so, who's our committee? So, on our committee at the moment, we have myself and um, Liz McKenzie is our treasurer, mm-hmm. and she's based up in Tauranga area. Um, Marie Williams is in Ashburton. Julia Arden is in Rangiora, mm-hmm. so two down south at the moment. Judy Sean is based in Auckland. Um, Felicity Allison in Ormondville, which is near Dannyburg. Ruth Lewis in Rotorua and Shirley Spark in Pahanui. So quite a spread. You've got a real spread, haven't you? Yes. Do you think that helps to meet the needs of our diverse range of quilters and interests and areas? Um, yes, I do, mm-hmm. yeah. We have, okay. um, they all have wide quilting interests as well as being spread geographically. So what does Aotearoa Quilters do for the quilting community in New Zealand? Uh, you know, if I was thinking of joining, what bang do I get for my buck? Because it all comes down to that, doesn't it? It does. Well, I like to think of it in terms of the three C's. You get connection, challenge and contribution. So I guess um, the connection is with the national quilting community. When I was a young mum at home and couldn't really get out to join a club or um, do any of those things, um, it was a point of connection for me. So I'd get the regular newsletters, I knew what was happening in the quilting world, I could participate in the long um, online, or in those days the workshops by mail, um, and I could enter the challenges and be part of what was going on. I didn't have to go out to a club Mm -hmm. and so that was important for me at that time. That's quite interesting you say that because a a lot of people, well some people have said to me, oh well Aotearoa Quilters is only really for the professional people and I'll just stick with my local club, thank you very much. But what you're saying is that when you were not able to go to a local club that this was a better option for you. So what, what, can you speak to that sort of statement? I think um, we have a lot of people who quilt and, 
and enjoy that as their craft and their hobby or their interest, passion, um, who don't belong to clubs and that's both rurally, um, if you're in an uh, isolated area and it's mm -hmm. hard to get to a group, or even urban quilters, where I'm seeing a lot of young women who, who are picking up sewing and um, developing mm. their interests, but they don't necessarily belong to clubs. They have busy lives and it doesn't always fit in. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is a great way um, for that connection to develop. Yeah, mm. okay, interesting to think about. So if we move on to your, what was your second C? My second C was challenge. Okay. And I, I, I think one thing that Aotearoa Quilters is good at is um, regular challenges that, put, that anyone can participate in and that members can participate in. And that's a really good way to extend your skills, develop your skills, and to have an opportunity to have your work shown in, in, out and about. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, What's our challenge? What challenges are you running at the moment? Uh, so we have touring the colour challenge, which is orange, and that's a 12 by 12 challenge, open to anyone who wants to enter, so you don't have to be a member. So 12 by 12, you're, you're saying a 12 inch square? Yes. So it's small, yes. achievable? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. okay. And so our next colour will, is pink, and so that's the one that we're asking people to send in at the moment. So we have had red, blue, green, purple, orange, pink, mm -hmm. what are you going to do next? Because well, we're going to run out of colours at one point. <laughs> I think there's plenty of colours to go. And, I might and, and by that time you won't be president and you won't have to worry. No, no. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Okay, yeah. sorry, carry on. That's alright. I think um, we also provide like the education seminar that we're at this weekend and that's an opportunity to challenge yourself and develop new skills mm -hmm. and um, that's a really important yeah. Thing for many people. So the education seminar that we're at today is um, education for judges. Mm -hmm. Not everybody here is going to want is going to end up being a quilt judge. Why are other people here? Some people are here to learn about what a judge is looking for and to improve their own quilting skills. Uh -huh. yeah. I think I've also seen people asking quite pertinent questions and gaining a lot of information about how to organise an exhibition, yes. how to think about uh, exhibition categories mm -hmm. and the criteria for judging because the judges don't set that and so actually exhibition conveners they need to think about those sorts That's of right. things. Yeah. So it's quite it's been quite a learning experience from that point of view yes. too. Yeah, and the curating of an exhibition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other C I had was contribution. So uh, I think Aotearoa Quilters can contribute to your life and journey as a quilter. Um, it's a national body and so we are developing the history and the knowledge of quilting in New Zealand. You can have free listings on our website for your mm -hmm. business. Yeah. I see I mean, what's that saying about ask what, not what your country can do, ask what you can do for your country. That's right. I think the more we get involved in, in a national association like this, the more chance that that association has to grow and provide services that develop and support and encourage yes. and all those sorts of things. So, And we, we, an example of how we contribute back to the community is Cozy Kiwi Kids, where we take donations of quilts and distribute them to kids in New Zealand who mm -hmm. have a need for warmth and uh, bedding. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the only thing that you contribute to the community. And you think about the exhibitions bring tourism into different areas. So Symposia, which Aotearoa Quilters has some, or is increasing the amount of guidance they have towards those, that's an awesome opportunity for a city to hold a symposia and to yeah, get the benefits that that tourism brings. So, That's right. Mm. And we would be very happy to hear from someone who would be interested in uh, running the symposium in 2021. Uh -huh. Yes, they should talk to Catherine MacDonald who ran, was a convener for Christchurch because yes. she did some quite in-depth study for what that brought to Christchurch yes. in terms of tourism dollars. 
I think the other connection also is the international connections that we're now getting. So we've had the recent challenge with Japan and France, which has been very popular. Mm -hmm. um, we also have Elsa Craig coming up where we're going to send a delegation to Canada and take an exhibition over there. So that's very exciting. That's fabulous, isn't it? So what presence does AQ have on social media? Where can um, we find you? Because a lot of people hang out on social media now. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a website, and that's where we try and put most of the information for members. And where would I find that? Um, www.aotearoaquilters.co.nz mm -hmm. And we have a Facebook page. Um, we try and keep that up to date and keep people informed about what's happening. And you have a Facebook page for Aotearoa Quilters. You also have a Facebook page for Aotearoa Quilters members too, so that's quite a supportive little group, isn't it? Yes, we have a, a group for Aotearoa Quilters members, and you have to be a member to join that group, mm -hmm. um, and that is developing into, as you say, a supportive group, a point of connection, a place where people can ask questions and find information. And hang out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instagram? Not yet? <laughs> Not yet. So, what's coming up in the calendar for the near future. You mentioned the Ilsa Craig. Hmm. So what is what is on the agenda? So the next major event we have is a members uh, kind of weekend in Palmerston North at the beginning of August, the 4th and 5th of August. The venue's still to be confirmed. So at that um, event, we will have the first showing of the pink challenge quilts and the Art Deco Challenge quilts. Which Did we is mention the Art challenge. Deco? No. So Art Deco Challenge is? Uh, a members challenge um, and the theme is Art Deco and I can't remember the sizes off the top of my head. No. But, um, <laughs> but it's, it's definitely larger than a 12 by 12 square yes. and you have to be a member to enter but you yes. can you can do your membership pretty much right up until the point of time yes. of entering the quilt. So. Yes. Absolutely. If anyone's got some burning Art Deco ideas, get to it. That's right. <laughs> so in Palmerston North you'll be judging the Pink Challenge, judging the Art, De Art Deco Challenge and the first viewing of it. Yes. And what else is happening on that weekend? Um, we will have the final showing of the International Challenge mm -hmm. before it goes off to France. And I've just heard this morning it's going to tour not only France but in Europe. Fabulous. So, um, yeah, so that'll be the final chance to cool. see that yeah. in person here. Um, we'll have a dinner, um, members have asked for a, a member's dinner, so we will do that with, with a speaker. I'm hoping that we might be able to have some other lectures and, and floor talks as well, and one or two other things that are not confirmed yet. Fabulous. Yeah. And long, so, th so that's Palmerston North, yeah. what else? Um, we've got the Great New Zealand Quilt Show coming up at, in the beginning of March, the 8th and 9th of March in Rotorua. Mm -hmm. um, in 2019. 2019, yeah, okay. and that was fabulous last time, and we're really looking forward oh, to seeing it. Oh, such a high quality show. I would encourage anyone to go to that. I would encourage our international neighbours to come over and go to that. Mm -hmm. And um, as we talked about before, Elsa Craig, where we've been invited to Canada to be part of their festival over there, and we're just oh. going through the process of you selecting tutors for that to be part of that delegation. Cool. Um, and next year we've identified that um, it will be the silver anniversary of Aotearoa Quilters. Right. And so at the symposium next year that, that will kind of be our theme. And okay. I have in my mind, I haven't spoken to them all yet, but that we'll have maybe a, a panel of the life members and involve them somehow in the silver anniversary. Ah, oh, panel that. discussion. That would be really interesting. Yeah. Ah, good plan. Yeah. Okay. What's the long-term plan for AQ? You know, if you had to think about where we're heading, what would you like to see it heading towards in the next five, ten years? I have many things in my, in my head, but I guess it's kind of the idea of um, Aotearoa Quilters being the national hub for all things quilting in New Zealand. So being that point of connection, having the up-to-date directories of shops and businesses, quilters, um, providing the education kind of side of it, running exhibitions, um, archiving our history, having an oversight over symposia and, and major mm -hmm. events, and providing some guidelines around things like we uh, talked about a couple of things yesterday. And I think um, there's kind of a gap in terms of 
consistency and yeah. consistency across yeah. New Zealand. Not telling people how they must do things, but saying this is one way that you could look yeah. at it and yeah. providing yeah. guidance and connection. It's exciting when you think about what it could be. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Mary. Well, um, we're almost at the end of this weekend. It's exhausting. We're all looking forward to a break, but it's been fabulous and fabulous to connect with everyone. So hopefully we'll be able to connect again soon. That would be great. You've been listening to the New Zealand Quilt Show. I'm your host, Charlotte Scott. Please visit my blog, the slightly mad quiltlady.blogspot.com, for show notes for this episode and any more information you might need. Email me, the slightly mad quiltlady at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you, so please don't be shy. And the music for this podcast is Crunk Night by Kevin McLeod of Incomputed.